I am so excited to share with you one of the people that I really admire, Dr. Jay Davidson. He has been, he is like a warrior on the cutting edge of chronic illness, working with Lyme patients and populations with autoimmunity and really, really helping them. So Jay, I would love to ask, how did you kind of get into, you know, you didn't take the easy route. How did you get into this line of work? <laughs> Yeah, well, it was, uh, it all came out of necessity, really, to get my wife well, you know, and I think that's, that's how most people end up in this chronic illness world, right? Like, it wasn't like, oh, I woke up one day, oh, Lyme disease seems like a great thing to study. And let's, <laughs> let's tackle that, you know? Yeah, it's like, no, my, my daughter was born in 2012. And uh, the bottom just fell out. My wife got really sick. Um, we at, now looking back, we realized that chronic Lyme disease went into acute mode. Um, she had toxicity issues like heavy metals that we never dealt with. And uh, two months in after my daughter was born, uh, she had to stop breastfeeding. She, uh, anything she put in her mouth, she became ultra reactive to. So she basically did the bone broth, um, just drank bone broth traditional. Um, that was before the Josh Axe Foundation bone broth was available, but the uh, uh, just drank traditional bone broth and water and 17 days and it was basically forced fasting. She put some lettuce in her mouth and her throat would swell off and just have a, you know, horrible reaction. And it was at that point where it was like, oh my gosh, we need to figure this out. Cause I, you know, I, not to think selfishly, but I'm like, I can't raise a newborn. <laughs> I've never been a parent before, you know, like I, I, you know, this, this has to, um, have to figure this out. And really it was from that point where everything shifted and I started looking, digging in the source, right? Understanding, first of all, what is Lyme disease? Mm -hmm. And then as I, the more I dug into it, the, realize, the more I realized that there's so many factors that need to play a role with it. Mm -hmm. And th that just really exposed me to this whole functional medicine type world. And um, yeah, it's all, it's all been different since then. No, I mean, what a baptism by fire, but also when it's yourself or your family, um, not only is the immediacy more impactful, but you kind of, you learn as you go. So you, you mentioned a lot of great things. And one of them that I really love about you is your focus on detoxification. I think you do such a brilliant job of not only helping people open the pathways, but really starting there and giving them kind of the basics. And I have come to believe that that is kind of where you need to start. So I'm curious how you um, found your path there and, and you know how you start with your patients. Yeah, it, it all comes back to my wife, you know, what we thought was a curse at the time uh, with her getting knocked down and out. And I mean, I literally remember laying next to her and not wanting to go to bed because I didn't know when I woke up if she'd be alive. Like it was that, you know, it's just, God. it was just that bad. And um, even just thinking about that now, I'm <laughs> trying not to tear up, but um, it, you know, my wife was that person where you would, you know, oh, take this, it'll help you sleep and rev her up oh, take this and it'll give you energy during the day and then she'd fall asleep, you know, or take this and it would cause this, op it was always like opposite reactions and a little yeah. bit went a long way. And it was a little frustrating because it didn't fit in the box of all the protocols, you know, and all the doctors that we saw. And, and that really, it was like, it was her figuring out how to get her well, where when, as she got well, then all of a sudden it was like, okay, if she can get well, like, you know, feel like anybody can get well. And, and that's where I really discovered the importance of drainage, you know, really supporting the pathways. And when I'm, when I'm thinking about drainage, I'm always thinking about the, the, the pathways that move fluids and move things in the body. And I love to separate the word drainage from detoxification. I always think of detoxification as it's, you know, grabbing onto chemicals, ripping them out, pulling them out. And I, I feel as if there's so many different meanings of detox, right? I'm, oh, I'm going to do a seven day juice detox. I'm going to, you know, and I, I, when I hear the word detox, I don't truly know what it means. When I hear the word drainage, I know immediately, okay, that's supporting pathways. That's making sure the colon's moving. So you're not constipated. That's making sure the liver bile duct is flowing, the lymphatic system, the glymphatic system, you know, the, the brain drainage and, you know, all, all these different things. And so I, I love to support drainage because I think that's the foundation for anybody's protocol. And then as you progress into parasite cleansing, as you progress into heavy metal detoxification, as you pro uh, progress into, you know, going after the smaller bugs like Lyme disease and these viruses, it de uh, drainage, I feel like just needs to come along with the journey. And the more... And, and I love that because I think um, you're so brilliant. Evan uh, Brand, our mutual friend said, you know, 
that kind of attacking parasites is like opening presents on Christmas morning. And then you have all the garbage that you need to clean up. And if, you know, the garbage department is on strike, how do you get that out? So I think, um, I think you're so wise and actually helping people. I think so many people jump into killing or mobilizing toxins. And if they're not leaving the body, then they're not doing anyone any good. So can you drill down a little bit on that, like really specifically how you like to start with drainage, what, what your first, um, you know, if you can kind of tear it, what, how you help people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am a massive fan of coffee enemas. And when I originally heard about them, I was like, what? You do what for why? Yeah. <laughs> and it took me a couple of years actually to wrap my head around it. And then, and then I would do one here and there and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, this, this, I can see this. Um, but now I really realize how important it is for everybody because coffee enemas help to stimulate the liver bile duct. So I love looking at things that we can do in our own lifestyle and, and life and environment than necessarily just, you know, taking a ton of supplements or, you know, buying a bunch of products. And I, and I love finding effective products, but I, I think really our base is if we can change our lifestyle and then use supplements and oils and things to supplement our basis of a lifestyle that's really the you know the foundation of it so really big fan of the liver bile duct i think that's i really believe that that is the number one important area to deal with and focus with because if that bile flow is clogged up or not moving as well mm -hmm. stomach acid gets messed up in the body mm -hmm. because basically the bile's got to neutralize the stomach acid mm -hmm. and so the body's like oh let's reduce that um so every it, Everything, when I'm looking from protocol, I'm looking at liver bile duct as being like that focus point. And then let's make sure that your bowels are moving too. For those that, you know, really struggle with like SIBO, uh, just getting the bowels to move is one of the most important things. And then also making sure that the ileocecal valve isn't, isn't opened up, which is the gateway between the colon and the small intestine. So, um, and again, that goes back to drainage. Let's just make sure the colon's moving. Let's right. make the liver, you know, liver bile ducts moving. But there's just so many great products that are out there. Um, no, I agree with you. And, you know, it's interesting. A good friend of mine who has SIBO called me this morning and she's constipated, doubled over in pain, vomiting and like bitters, you know, and binder. It's all gallbladder. Like that's, it's almost like checking the traffic, you know, report. And if you notice that the freeway is closed, not taking it, like you really need to make sure that your exit pathway, you know, or, <laughs> my kids are funny with school shooting. Every place they go, they're like, I'm always looking at the exit, figuring out how I get out, which is a terrible way to frame it. But the idea is before you start mobilizing toxins, either through a detox effort or something where you're attacking the bugs, you really need to make sure that they can leave the body. And tell me why, I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do for the liver gallbladder. Why coffee enemas? What is it about that um, remedy that you seem to f feel is beneficial? Well, it's, I feel like it's a pretty inexpensive thing. Um, I've become a really big fan of the seeking health silicone bag setup uh, than the traditional stainless steel bucket. And I got both of them, but really like the bag. I think it's just easier, but you know, so it's a pretty minimal investment to actually get the equipment. And then yeah, you're just $20 on Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. 20, maybe 25 bucks or something. And then you're getting, you know, good quality coffee, like SA Wilson's or, you know, just some other good organic light roasted or air roasted. So it's pretty inexpensive. And, uh, you know, it's morphed over the years where I now add, you know, like tangerine essential oil to try to help purge that liver bile duct. I'd love to hear your um, take on, is there a blend uh, from Vibrant Blue or something that you'd recommend that would really work well for that liver bile duct area? Yeah, we have two. We have the parasympathetic blend that you put on the vagus nerve. And so that just triggers the whole downstream digestive cascade, including having the bile, um, the gallbladder release bile, and then also motility in the intestines. And then we have one for the gallbladder, which is great for kind of making it more um, viscous. One of the things you mentioned, it gets, uh, it gets a little congested. And so it's a little bit more like molasses than water. So it just helps it flow. Um, I haven't added oils to the coffee enema. That's, that's actually interesting. I mean, it, it, you know, not to get too explicit, but getting remedies into your system, like suppositories and enemas, it gets it right into the body. So that's a really efficient channel.
Yeah. And the thing I, I do, and you're more of an expert in, in this area, so I always love to hear your feedback, but I like to make the coffee enema solution up like two cups of water to four tablespoons of the coffee. And then I steep it in there. And then I've got two other cups of water that's just like room temperature. And I'll take some Himalayan sea salt or, you know, some good quality salt. And then I'll actually drop the essential oil right in the salt to try to absorb the oil in the salt. Yes. So it doesn't float. And then I'll mix that and then I'll mix that in the room temperature water while my coffee enema stuff is steeping and then pour that in. Cause I, I just wonder about like essential oils in a, you know, steeping hot liquid for 15 minutes with the coffee. So um, I've kind of separated that way, but I, and, that's and then really smart. the other, the other thing that I like to add to it, it might sound weird, but I like to put some uh, about a tablespoon of molasses in the coffee enema solution. Cause it's really thick. And that's been an amazing helper for people to help hold a coffee enema. So for somebody that does it and they get like this massive urge after a couple of minutes, oh my gosh, how am I ever supposed to make 15 minutes molasses? I think it's the potassium or something in there just is like a, a golden nugget. So, I mean, I'm looking at coffee, molasses together. Then I've got the room temp water uh, with the salt and the essential oil, you know, on the salt, dissolve that up, let that steep for 15 minutes, combine it and, you know, off off we go. So it's a lot, it, it's, it's definitely advanced over the years, but you know, coffee enemas really help to, you know, the, you, you put the tube in about six inches, mm -hmm. but it's a direct access right to the liver. So there's right. the hemorrhoids or hemorrhoidal veins that connect to the hepatic portal vein. And when, when you put something rectally, it goes right to the liver because of that pathway. And what happens is it stimulates the bile to purge. It stimulates movement, but it also stimulates the liver to make new bile. And the important thing to understand about bile, especially in the detoxification realm, is it gets recycled. It gets recycled 95% of the time, mm -hmm. which means we're looking at, you know, out of 20, 20 times that that bile gets released, goes in the, through the small intestine, gets absorbed at the end of the small intestine, it'll get recycled 19 times before that 20th time it'll let it go. Mm -hmm. Well, toxins are in there. So if we're not... Oh, I love it. So you don't, you're you not retoxifying. You're making sure that it's releasing the toxins by doing the coffee enema. And I think that's really... When I look at like Max, Max Gerson, who started the Gerson Institute, and then now right. his daughter, Charlotte, I think she's still around, is running that. Right. You know, that's, that's the institute in Mexico where people can go and treat cancer with coffee enemas and a vegetarian diet. And yeah. Talking. And I believe they do like five coffee enemas a day. When I think about it, I'm I like, wondering, I was going to ask you how often you recommend it. I like like two to th like when somebody's having health issues, I like right. two to three times a week. Yeah. That, that's um, what I think too. But I think the missing factor is what about having something to bind the bile? So because yeah. coffee enemas purge the bile, what if we were to take some like bioactive carbon um, you know, like a half hour before. So now we have a catcher's mitt in the intestine and then we get done. I like to do actually two coffee enemas back to back just to try to really get that and purge. What, like for, for people listening at home, like um, I like GI detox. I think that's a good binder. I, I don't think there's a one size fits all, but do you have a binder recommendation for Yes, I do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little biased, but um, the bioactive carbons that we've got are systemic. So this has been, I really... And again, I'm biased to this, but I feel like this oh, is the systemic formulations. They're buying uh, products. Uh, nope, nope, microbe oh. formulas. Okay. So um, the things that are out there right now are mm -hmm. just in the digestive tract. So whether okay. they're a clay, whether they're a carbon or a charcoal, and whether they're coconut based or um, peach pectin, you know, and yeah, yeah, or, yeah, all that stuff. Well, they're just in the GI tract, which for okay. the coffee enema could be okay. But the bioactive carbons that we have at Microbe Formulas, they're actually nano-sized. So they get not only, and it's a little more complex, but essentially within a capsule, there's long chain carbons, there's medium chain carbons, and there's small chain. And so it's you're easiest. swallowing it, but it doesn't stay in the digestive channel. It goes to where it's needed in the body. Well, uh, the long chain carbons stay in the gut. Okay. And then the medium and the small actually go into the body. So medium go in the tissues and stuff. And then the small is what goes into the cells and crosses the blood brain barrier. And so can depending you on the link where people can get that and I can add that to the notes. Yeah. 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 Um, do you want me to put that in the chat or. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, or, or we'll add it later. And yeah. Yeah. We can why, just add it later. This is what I love about people like you that are out there doing it because you're actually inventing, you're seeing a need for something and inventing it as you go so that it solves a problem. 
Yeah. Well, the, the guy, one of our scientists, he's been in this world, his, speci- his specialty is poly anion and poly electrolyte is his PhD. Right. And it's in like the carbon world. Right. And so he's used like, you know, the C60s and the buckyballs and all that stuff. And he's inventing some other stuff I can't even mention on here right now in the carbon world, but he, he's able to modify the molecules of like fulvic acid and humic acid. Mm -hmm. And so the easiest way to kind of explain it is you think about like the fulvic acid molecule, Mm -hmm. it's got about 60 binding positions. Well, Mm -hmm. it's like a school bus, right? Mm -hmm. If we're taking something that's like an activated carbon charcoal, they call them spent carbons, which means a lot of the binding things are already bound onto. And there's, there's a few open spots, but not a lot, right? It's like a bus with a lot of kids on, there's a few open seats. Well, we're able actually to essentially empty the seats off so that the long chain carbon that gets put in there that's in the gut is very good at binding. But then, of course, the medium and the small goes systemic. So um, and then depending on what they're programmed for, because we can alter the charge, we can alter this, um, the size, we can alter the pH and the pH is a big driver for location uh, can really, you know, do different things. So like probably the most exciting one we have out, it's called the Bioactive Carbon Foundation, and it does viruses, retroviruses, radiation. It's got some- Heavy metals. It's got some heavy metal chelating in it as well, and pesticide chelating. We have another product that's specifically just- that, That's the one that sounds like the all around part. Here, here's what I love. So what people don't tell you, the gallbladder goes into the small intestine and then it's supposed to be eliminated, but sometimes it gets reassimilated. And so you really need binders in there to make sure that they grab the toxins and the toxins aren't reassimilated with the bile that's being recycled. And that's what most people I think get wrong that you are getting right. And the issue I've had is that binders can be so complicated. You know, like if you have heavy metals in your mouth, you might not want chlorella. If you have aluminum, you might want this. It just feels overwhelming. And so I've kind of struggled with what binder do I tell people to get because I didn't want it to cause more problems than it solved. But it sounds like you've got a great solution. Yeah. Yeah. And we, um, you know, we were up at uh, Klinghart's office a couple months ago, Dr. Todd and I, and, you know, he's just, he's just Todd great. Todd Watts, who also is in the Lyme world. I, I would say that you, Jay Davidson, Todd Watts, Dietrich Klinghart and Christine Schaffner are really on the cutting edge of Lyme treatment. And, and, putting people into remission. You're having success, which is amazing. Yeah, it's it's um, it's all come out of hardship. You know, Dr. Todd got his life back from Lyme disease, clearing parasites out. And that's why I like to call him the parasite guy now. Um, oh, yeah. I love his line, <laughs> if you have a pulse, you have a parasite, which I think is, is true. But I think that um, I've seen people kind of nosedive almost when they start with the gut and it just like, they just feel so much worse. So I think the way you're doing it is um, drainage. It's a gentler pathway towards healing. Yeah, you got to start with drainage, and you know I've used binders for years, um, and they've they've been awesome. But now it's just like we've got another you know tier up and and the next level. And uh, from some of the things coming down the pipeline with um, you know the carbon stuff, I, again I can't really even uh, say it yet. But uh, some of the things you coming down, the- you'd have to kill us when, when <laughs> you announce it, like. Um, you know, officially? Um, well, it, it might be sooner than later, actually. I thought it was going to be a little farther out, but it looks like we might have something available sooner than later. And it's carbons that are... Sooner, like by the summer or by the end of the year? What are you... Uh, yeah, probably by... Possibly by summer, uh, okay. possibly. So, and, it, and it's getting into, I guess... Um, it's getting into angstrom technology. So instead of nano, it's angstrom. So like if you... Uh, it's small enough to go in between the bonds of the DNA, you know, like the A to T and the C to G, you know, along the DNA strands. Um, and our scientist always likes to explain it. He's like, it's imagine you're five feet from a goalpost, you know, a football goalpost, and you have a marble and you're throwing it through. That's how small it is to get in in between actually the DNA strands. So we, we're able to, you know, like repair things that I don't think really have been able to be repaired, you know, from a natural product standpoint. So I'm, I'm super jacked about it, but of course, the more I talk about it, the more everybody's going to be like, when's this going to be out? So, know, right. But well, it's interesting that we talked about um, one of the things, the, the reasons I think essential oils are so valuable, especially when you're chronically ill is if your digestion is compromised, it's challenging to get 
remedies in through that channel. So the olfactory channel, the transdermal channel, you know, um, the channel through the bowels, all of these kind of back doors can really help people because things are being assimilated into their system and actually they, they can heal right away. So I love I love everything you've shared. Um, there were some questions people asked, uh, what essential oils? I think the citrus, I think you're on the right track. Like um, grapefruit oil, which we sell, is also good for helping with the liver and also with lymph. So that's another one that I might consider. Um, the tangerine, the orange, I think lemon. I can't believe people put lemon in their water all the time. I think it's harsh. You know, you can get Sharpie off of anything with lemon oil. So I don't necessarily tell people to take that one internally, but grapefruit and tangerine are good choices. And let's see, people wanted to know, um, how often do you recommend coffee enemas? So you think two or three times a week? Yeah, well, if it, two or three times a week, if you're in the middle of health restoration, uh, yeah. you know, but if you're just maintenance, I mean, once every other week, once a month, you know, I, I feel like um, the more you're struggling, the more you want to support drainage, right? The more stressed out you are, the more you want to support drainage, the more you want to push killing of pathogens or detoxing chemicals, the more that you want to support drainage. So depending on where you're at and coffee enema is just in that drainage tool box, right? Yes. And how soon, like if someone's thinking like, let's take SIBO for example, um, I just found out I have SIBO. I want to go on this protocol, but I want to make sure my drainage is open first. Do you think like two weeks, how long would you kind of work on the gallbladder, the liver, mm. the lymph, really opening the channels before you kind of dive into some uh, remedy? Yeah, so I like I like 30 days um, doing the intestinal mover to move the bowels. We've got a lymphatic detox and then a kidney liver detox. So it's like three it's like three products that basically you can open all the pathways up and move. And that would be the, for the general person, somebody that's maybe you know a lot more sensitive. Might be a little longer, but I, I feel right. like it's a good safe thing to say. Let's support that 30 days, and then right. we can bring in something. To, to really start with parasite cleansing, like a mimosa pudica seed or, you know, some other stuff. And then, you know, add in some binders and things like that and start, you know, going after things. But uh, supporting drainage, I, I really believe, you know, 30 days is a good, good time frame. And the other thing that I, I kind of want to stress is that um, in order to heal, your immune system needs to be kind of on track and you need the energy to heal. And if you have excess toxins, that's draining your energy and throwing off your immune system. So this really is foundational in terms of kind of setting yourself up for success and, you know, taking on a healing protocol. It really is. Yeah. And, and, and it's... <sighs> It's putting all the pieces together. Uh, drainage, I feel like, though, you just can never go wrong. And I know it's a blanket statement, but I have yet to see somebody. It's like, oh, I, 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 I got worse because I did too much drainage. I have yet to see that. So, and I, and I love that you separate detoxification from drainage because I think they've been looped together. And I think you're right. I think detoxification is kind of mobilizing toxins. But if they've got nowhere to go, you know, if they could be safely ensconced in the gallbladder and somehow you've moved them to the brain and now you feel worse. So it's really smart. Thank you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just. I just got confused. So that's why I'm like, <laughs> drainage or detox, right? Like, yeah. give me, give me some details here. And and I know it'll probably continue for many years where everybody just uses detox all the time. But if I do hear the word drainage, I instantly know that's what they're referring to. Well, no, and I'm so excited that you came on Facebook Live because I really want my tribe to know about your upcoming summit and all the great information, even more pearls and gems. And I think you're even giving them. Um, some of your how-tos like on the enema and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Just for registering, we've got a bonus about uh, the coffee enema side of things. So, but yeah, the chronic Lyme disease summit number three, you're a speaker on there. It was such a great time to interview you about the topic of essential oils. I just value your information and, and how practical you make it to. Um, there's just some, you know, some people you interview and it's like all academic and you're like, it doesn't make sense of like anything in practical life, you know, like give me something. Well, to someone told me when you're a parent, you're really a marketer, right? You're going to brush your teeth with the super minty toothpaste and then we're going to climb in our cozy jannies. And, you know, it's like you have to learn how to talk to anyone when you're mom or dad. Yes. Being, being a parent changes everything. But everything. Uh, yeah, the chronic Lyme disease summit number three, I'm so excited. It starts a week from today, April 30th through May 9th and uh, free to register for it. You know, so really encourage you to just click on the link that's, you know, on this Facebook live and get registered. Jody is one of the speakers on there and we've got uh, people talking about mold. We've got people talking about the emotional connection with yes. Lyme disease 
you know, and how it's actually conflict resolution that can bring that on. I mean, things that are like my brain never even considered until I heard, you know, experts like Trina, for instance, on here, oh, you know, describe that. it. Cause you know, with Lyme, Lyme disease, everybody thinks about a tick and it's a bacteria. Yes. It's, it's more the immune system. And that's, that's the one thing I really want my tribe to hear is that um, even if you don't have Lyme, this is really valuable because I really think that at, at the root, every, every disease, be it autoimmunity, autism, Lyme, all of these things have the same kind of common denominators. They might have different bugs or slightly different um, causation, but at the end of the day, healing them all requires drainage and detoxification and modulating the immune system and balancing the stress response and sleeping. And you're going to get such valuable information that you can use on yourself, whether you have Lyme or not, that it's worth signing up, especially because you get his free coffee enema dissertation. <laughs> yeah. And Evan, my dissertation, it makes it very, very easy. Like <laughs> the best coffee enema how to have ever seen in my life. And I read everything. Evan Brand um, that you mentioned earlier is also a speaker on there talking about Lyme and parasites. We've got I love a, him. I think he's so smart. Researcher Dr. Brian Ballin, who's in the trenches of in the lab going through, you know, infection like chlamydia, pneumonia, and other, you know, infections and how it's linked with dementia and brain, you know, diseases, because there's so much, you know, thoughts about Lyme and can it have cognition type issues. Um, ketogenesis, lactic acidosis, Christine Schaff, Dr. Christine Schaffner, Dr. Klinghart, you know. Um, so I feel like it's just really, really blessed. It's such a great lineup of people to really bring, you know, information that the world needs to hear. Okay, so just a few more questions, then I'll let you go. Lisa asks, I don't sweat. What can I use? So um, we, can, we can talk about not sweating and how that's kind of a, a detox reaction. Our lymph oil is really good for that and dry brushing. Do you have other uh, infrared saunas? What do you recommend? Yeah, yeah, I I see the skin not sweating as a drainage pathway clogged up. And um, I love, I, I, I think, inf I really believe infrared sauna is a great option, low and slow to try to open that pathway up. Dry brushing, absolutely. Like you said, the lymph, lymph oil, I mean, those are all great options. I would say the same thing. And then... Um, Marishka wanted to know, uh, how long should we hold in the coffee enemas? I hear different numbers, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. What's your thoughts? I like to do 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so just understand the blood flows through the liver every six minutes, like the whole blood, you know, all our blood. Um, but when you do a coffee enema, it shortens to three minutes. So even if you're not able to, because people get really fixated, like I need to hold it for 15 minutes. And if they, you know, all of a sudden they can't hold it at 12 minutes, they get disappointed, you know, in themselves. It's like, no, you're gonna get a good effect, but I really like 15 minutes and then sit on the toilet, gently void, and then I like to go back and try to do a second one for another 15 minutes, especially because you like have it all set up. It's just not that hard just to do another one and then you're really Talk getting about that. that for a moment because I've never heard that before. What's the benefit of the double header? Does it just... Well, the whole, the whole process of coffee enema, in, in my mind, is we want to purge the liver bile duct Okay. So the more that we get in there and the more time we get, or the more we're getting movement. And I've had multiple people that it's on the second coffee enema where all of a sudden they hear this glub, glub, you know, like all of a sudden the, it, it dumps. So, um, and I know like my good friend, Dr. Nick Ellenson, he just does like, I don't know how he does it, but he does all four cups of the coffee enema at once and holds it for 30 minutes. And I'm like, well, that's just, that just makes me sweat thinking about that much. So yeah, I do, I do two cups. 15 minutes, two cups, you know, second 15 minutes. Awesome. Super helpful. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Sorry for the technical difficulties and sign up for the Lyme Summit. You, I promise you, you will learn more amazing, valuable information. Yeah, I'm excited and just want to thank uh, Mary for helping us with the tech know, side of it you, today. <laughs> for, you know, our goddess with the te technical difficulties. Thank you. Thank you.